everybody knows who Heiachi is. He gives you the electric Noogie, and then he'll like power bomb you, and he'll electric wind god this you. Give me that. And, the, and I actually think that it's plausible because Bandai Namco worked on this game, and they also basically worked, I, I, I don't know like how much they did, but I know they did a lot of work on Tekken. So it's possible. It's very possible they had a Mii costume in Smash 4, um, and then even uh, on the Wii U, Tekken Tag Tournament 2 had uh, like some Mario costumes in there. So it's like they've collaborated before. Give me a Tekken character. But even if I don't get a Tekken character, I won't complain. I won't complain at all. I got Banjo. I never thought it was going to happen. Ever. Like I said, guys, I'm an old man. So um, it's, it's nice that they indulged me. Never thought I'd see the day. And for everyone who's just tuning in, this is MSM 199. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, we are going to have MSM 200, and that's going to be a pretty big one. So make sure if you can't, if you can't come out to that, which would be really awesome if you could, because it's going to be big. We're going to have raffles. Um, yeah, just stop by. Stop by. If you can't, come into the chat. All right, so we're going to democratically elected Pokemon Stadium 2. All right, there's the wolf. Just press B. That's all you gotta do, just press B. All right, cool. The friendly fist bump of justice. All right, let's get started. All right, so this is winner's quarters, so that means it's still going to be a best of three. Um, I mean, all things, all things Wolf, he just doesn't really have a whole lot of range against uh, Richter, but he has a lot of that aerial mobility, so it's going to be, that seems fairly even, but as soon as Wolf is off stage, of course it's not. Welcome back. Yes. Oh, whoa, this is Vance. <laughs> You're not who I was commentating with. What's up, it's, Vance? It's T3 Dome, and he just throws, take this, and he reads that the fact that he was going to go jump from the ledge because he's scared of the uh, holy water. That was really good, actually. But I mean, that's, it's that's, all his name. That, that's, that's what you want to do. You want to force your opponent to pick an option so that you, they immediately fall for what you wanted to. It's basically what T3 Dome is trying to do is make sure Charlie plays his game, but Charlie's kind of really self-aware. He's a very self-aware player. That's so, sure. yeah. Okay, that was nice. This, this is Charlie's opportunity. I was going to say, he wants to set up the up smash, but unfortunately he didn't take care of the cross. I've seen Wolf go for like the drop down nares a lot against these types of characters. Yeah, um, it's simply because when they go for the tether grab, um, Richter, I'm sorry, Richter, the Belmonts have like, the longest tether grab in the game alongside Joker. When they go for the tether, see, this is what I'm saying. Like He has that set up because if Charlie went for neutral get up or roll get up, you see that distance he covered, he could have forward tilted him, he could have grabbed him. And so he, if he picked neutral get up, he's going to get hit by cross, confirming to the axe at that percent. As I'm saying, he wants Charlie to play his game. Like I said, Charlie's super self-aware, though. Well, the one thing he has to do is be careful on what moves he lands on the shield and when he makes that hard approach. True that. Look at this. And he's already keeping him out right now. Oh, okay. That was, that was smart. T3 don't return to, uh, definitely returned to the platform because he knew like Charlie was set up for the back air. Oh, barely whiffing that axe, too. Uh, that was good. Yeah, that was good. He, he, it, was, it was spaced enough. That's what I'm saying. Charlie's super self-aware. It was spaced enough to the fact that like T3 Dome was in that space that up smash would have actually killed. It's really nice too because it's low profile, so it's just. Oh. Like, oh. <laughs> what a deck chase! Oh no, whiffing that nair, and eh, not like Wolf really got a whole lot out of that. He's got to stop. Charlie has to stop jumping. Yes, that's been getting him in trouble mm -hmm. a little bit lately, especially against that can't. Oh yeah. No. If if T3 Dome would have gone for a 45 degree angle forward air, so diagonal and forward air, he would have made the recovery. But unfortunately, he went for a B because he was afraid of getting hit by Wolf nair, knowing that that's how that works in that type of recovery. Yeah, he's probably thinking, hey, if I put him in tech chase situation, that's good too. Yeah, mm -hmm. knock him off the stage. Good space from Charlie. He's he's trying to make sure that he stays in a certain golden area, like kind of like mid range, mm. so that if Belmont's around, he's able to just go ahead and get in there. Yeah, that's what Wolf's all about. He's such a mid range character. He's so all around. Oh no. Okay. Okay. That oh, he's, good, he's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. Yeah. Okay. There's that nair. Yeah. T3 Dome has been really a big proponent of using that nair around the, the ledge there. Watch the yeah. Watch the get up option. See, that's what you want to do when you're fighting Richter or the Belmonts in general. You want them to commit to axe because it's one of the slowest moves, and you want them to commit to that hard read. That's why Charlie kind of stayed in the ledge. He had a ledge invincibility. Mm, big time. So he was super self aware. Really. He bit. Really no, he's good, he's good, he's good, he's good. You have to admire that spacing though. Oh, that's not going to kill yet. Though. It wasn't sweet spot, yeah. Mm. Okay. Wait for it, yeah. So you want him to make the commitment. 
Sometimes I feel like he's just throwing out the axe just to kind of condition him into doing something, and that's probably exactly what he's doing. It's it's uh, the fact that it also goes under the ledge too as well, so it'll it'll actually catch in the middle of uh, we'll f we'll fire since he doesn't snap. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's that. Cross. Well, only we'll, we'll fire will snap, but like we'll flash the auto snap the ledge, so you can't get caught. Dash attack. It's really good to set up the edge guard here. He has his back showing, so he's looking to see if he can get the up smash back air or the roll get up here. Really good opportunity to take care of three of the five options your oh, opponent yeah. would usually have. It's kind of nice too because when Richter is in the ledge there, if there were no platforms, he had that down tilt to just reestablish neutral if he doesn't yeah. get punished for it. Blaster, get again one more time. Mm, can I keep that, that spacing. Oh, I, mean, I see that Charlie tried to pair. That was really smart. That would allow him to go in. What a reflector. You can tell t Dooms. That's the thing about the Belmonts. They have a hard time landing, and Charlie takes advantage of the fact that he's been so sticky around that platform. He's like, bro, let me just see where you're going, and then I'll get the, I'll get you in there when you at least expect it. That was good at that. And his best landing options are kind of poor. So. Yeah, like yeah. down air and air, <laughs> go to the ledge. Like, <laughs> that's all you got, man. Mm. But that's the thing about the character. Like, he's so used to establishing control, having control, having that, that mid-range game going on that he has to have that one weakness, and it's in landing. Mm. I, I love Charlie's face. Like, he looks like he's been through a war. Like, he, he won the game, but he's just like, nah. <laughs> there's, there's more to be done. There's more. Yeah, there's, there's always more to be done. I think I think Charlie's gonna tell me here. He's here to learn, man. He's here to see how things go. Yeah, that's we what we, we should become the tournament for. We, in my opinion, like this is a little bit of bias, but like we do have like two of the best, two two of the best Belmonts out there in the business here in SoCal. We do have T3 Dome and Nitro. I know there's riddles, but like Nitro definitely out here putting in numbers. So don't don't sleep on the IE ever. No, I totally agree. And right now, oh my god. Just so that was testament. good. That was good. He was right behind him because he was going to go for the forward air. He gets him this nice combo, gets off the platform. Good adaptation here because he knows Belmont's poor landing. Light have to go to the ledge, and that's yep. such a textbook read. Yeah. Well like, spaced. He, he thought maybe he could land with the nair, but nah, he just decided to run away and get a, as much as he could off of it. He got a stock. Oh, 69. Oh. Nice. Good, good. Cross. Understanding the cross up goes for the back air. Great punish. Stage control in hand after that one. Oh my god, look at this. Oh, barely whiffing that back air. Oh, uh, yeah, that actually had some implications on it. Could that be? Watch, watch the cells. They say, watch this, uh, the options you're picking here, because at that point you might fall into it just like that. Yeah. He lost ledge invincibility, so Charlie kind of knew. Okay, I have to pick an option here, because that's what's gonna have to go on here. I heard uh, Charlie was talking about how uh, this character's uh, Richter has fake pressure at the ledge. <laughs> it, it is. That's what I'm saying. That's the thing that it becomes very daunting on an opponent. Like when you when you're getting tossed everything like that, you will lose your stock in that situation with such a confirm. But what you need to be careful is the end lag of some of their moves, a the start up on the frames too. Like look at that how long that took for the holy water there. Yeah. That oh. was but that was a great confirm from T3 Dome. That was crazy, man. That cross made it work. <laughs> that was insane. Okay. Oh, barely. Good. Whoa, I love that. We just made him with that uh, dash attack. That was really smart from uh, Charlie. Wait for the ledge here. Once again, showing the back. Trying to cover three of the five options and then gets the other two, making it a 50-50. Charlie looking to keep the middle of the stage here because he knows T3 wants to make that approach slowly. Oh, yeah. He doesn't have the range to compete with that whip. Oh, great use of the platform, but T3 immediately covered up with a, with a nair. Mm -hmm. At this point, Charlie's just trying to sense out what he can do to get T3 to get off the stage and then sends out his uh, edge guard opportunity here. <sighs> oh, I didn't account for that. That cross I, has been working on him. Yeah, this last game, he kind of had it down. There was no way you were going to be able to figure out how to die that man. I love that's, how he just did it. Yeah. Well, that's one of those things that we saw Charlie do earlier, right? He kind of just did it to his opponent and his opponent wasn't ready. And you have to expect the unexpected when you play a game like this. Oh, yeah. Especially like since Charlie actually labs out those side B combos. Like, I, hate, I hate to be the commentator that tells you this, but this it is, it is, is very much even game. Charlie gets the edge guard, gets the nair in the middle of it. <gasps> no, you're good, you're good. Yeah, he has enough time to air dodge, but unfortunately the oh, DI was not going to be ready man. because T3 already adapted to that, and he knew where he was going to go after forward air, up air. He was going to go forward air and then get Charlie on that one. We're bringing it 1-1 one, one apiece. Not too bad. And this is still this, this guy. This guy did not go to breakthrough. That's like what makes me upset. This guy was like in my fantasy bracket, did not show up to breakthrough, probably at home. Doing who knows what in his own. <laughs> what you, wait, whatever you do at your own home is your own time, but real talk, you should just come to break through. Audrey. All right, going back. Does T3 don't have anybody else that he plays, or is he just straight up? You know, uh, UCI, so uh, I I can only tell you for like an indefinite effect, like you probably might play Rafi or a couple other UCI players. 
Uh, that's as far as I know, man. I'm, I don't live out there in Irvine. I'm from the Great 18. So, mm -hmm. well, let's go. Let's go to a stage oh, that we're okay. all familiar from. It's Final Destination. This is gonna give Charlie the opportunity to actually just not worry about the platforms and have solid ground and enough space. But that's the thing too is that Ricker also gets all that space. It's true. Uh, like I said before, like when he was uh, mentioning the down tilt, like that's really all he has. And I think that uh, Charlie can basically just exploit that option. Yeah. But this is one of those things that like, T3 don't kind of know. like, okay, if I haven't spaced that, I'm winning the war. But once Charlie gets in, that's where Belmonts really struggle. Oh, it sucks for them. It completely sucks for them. They only have so many things that they can do, and they're very predictable. Safe play from Charlie. Didn't go off stage. Mm. I never expected it, but he should have been kept on the shield. That axe goes so low, and the range was not going to be enough. Almost. Sometimes, at that point in the stage, getting hit by Axe is actually worth it because of the direction that it sends you, it pops you up. So yeah. it gives you an opportunity to actually come back on the stage. So yeah. Only at like those percents. If you're like at 160, bro, don't even take it. Yeah, you will die. One of the few moves that didn't get really nerfed on the shield damage uh, mm -hmm. in that patch. Oh, man. Such a good, just a really good precision from T3 Dome. Being able to work those aerials. Oh, he's, he's got him in the loop, man. He's got him. Charlie has to be careful on the landing. Good opportunity to come back in the stage with the back and that reads that approach. Yeah. That was a bad landing. Just right in front of Charlie. And it's hard, too, because like I said, T3 Dome just, the moments, they have a struggle to land. They do. Even when he was approaching, though, that was that was one of the big problems. He just went a little too aggro, and he got punished for it. Yeah. Charlie just, this is Charlie's game here. He's trying to get a whiff punishment. It's really hard, but he's got the great combo, 59%. I mean, like I said, this could be pretty much even game if he gets the right edge guard. Mm. It's true. It is hard to punish, uh, whiff punish with Wolf in this matchup, because it's like you're getting outranged the whole time. Yep. yep. Good read. He knew he was going to go for neutral get up. Charlie had been spacing out the, uh, by showing his back for back air, roll, things like that. But one time he changes it up, T3 Dome, not ready for that one. And you got to be careful for the mix-up. That's what it's called that. Big time. I'm actually, I really like the way that Charlie, oh, hold on. Let me hold that thought for a second. Okay, okay, I was going to say, I like how he likes being very sparing with that laser. He's very quick about it, too. He doesn't just sit there and spam it. He's very fluid with his movement. Mm -hmm. It's it's kind of proper conditioning. Like, I want you to hold shield so I get a small chance on an approach. Things like that. Uh, watch. The, let's see, that's the thing, too. Is like, I respect how Charlie was playing that a little bit aggressively, but you have to be careful once Belmont has that little bit of range to hit you with back air or forward air. Right. <laughs> oh, that was good, that was good, that was good. Yeah, almost. Oh, and it, it fell down. See, he's still, see how that pops you up? You're yep. still alive. The next axe will actually kill, so Charlie does not want to get hit by axe at all. Mm -hmm. Okay, good parry. good parry. Yeah, not quite. Didn't get the sweet spot from the up B. I didn't even know that up B had a sweet spot. Yeah. Oh, that's that. That explains why Good opportunity to read the fact that he had to go for Nair, and T3 had the right opportunity, but unfortunately, like, going for Nair, man, he kind of just risked it all. Well, that's going to be it for me. I'll be right back, guys, later. Oh. Taking over the mic for just a hot second. We'll see oh, I was about to leave for... Uh